Hello everyone, this is Mr. Undercoffler, and today we're going to be looking at 11 practice problems that we're doing today in class to give us just an extra review on some of the topics that will be on our test. Now, if you do not have the paper for these problems, if you're at home, um, there is a PDF file in Canvas, and you can go ahead and use that. Um, just do the problems on a separate sheet of paper. You don't have to copy down the original problems. Just pull up the PDF file in Canvas and do these problems on your own. So if you have not done that yet, Please stop this video immediately, pull up the PDF file, do the 11 problems on your own. The purpose of this video is to just review the work and solution. So you really need to do this on your own first. So if that's you, stop this video now and do these problems on your own. Otherwise, here we go. Problem number one, find the value of X. Well, how are you gonna do this? Well, hopefully you notice there is a right angle. The right angle we obviously know means 90 degrees, but there's also this straight line. And if you have a 90 degree angle here, you could also draw another one right next to it. Now, why am I doing that? Because here we have angle X, this very narrow angle, and we have the 55 degree angle that is right next to it. Those two angles together form this red right angle that I have here on my screen. And we know that if two angles together form a right angle, then they would add together to equal 90 degrees because the right angle equals 90 degrees. So to solve this, two ways of doing it. You could subtract the 58 from 90 and get X equals 32 degrees, or you could even set up an equation, 58 plus X equals 90, then subtract 58 on both sides, you get the exact same answer. Problem number two, two angles are complementary angles. One of them is 43 degrees. What is the measure of the other angle? Um, the word complementary means that they add together to equal 90 degrees. So it's kind of like what we were just looking at here on number one, except number two, there's no picture. But it's still the same idea. They add up to equal 90. So two ways of doing the work. You can subtract from 90 and get 47 degrees, or you can set up an equation. 43 plus the other angle, call it X if you want, equals 90, subtract on both sides, same exact answer. Problem number three, which angle is complementary? Here's this word again, to angle one. All right, we just got done saying complementary angles means that they add up to be 90. Well, how are we gonna see what angle goes with angle one to be complementary angles? Well, notice we have this right angle and we have a straight line that that right angle is on. You can draw another right angle next to it. Oh, it just so happens angle one is right there. What angle together forms with angle one to form the right angle? Well, hopefully you can now see what it is. It is angle four. Now, word of advice. On the test, you do not want to get complementary angles mixed up with some other types of angles that also start with C. We've talked about the word congruent. Congruent means same measure. Um, angle one is actually congruent to angle two. It's also congruent to angle five for different reasons. Angle one and two are vertical angles. Angle one and five are alternate exterior angles. So you definitely need to make sure you know your vocabulary words and do not get them mixed up. There's another word that starts with a C called corresponding angles, which are not the same as complementary angles. So make sure you know your vocabulary for the test. All right, problem number four almost looks like number two. In fact, it's almost identical, except for one very important key word supplementary angles. Okay, these are not the kind that add up to be 90. These are the kind that add up to be 180 degrees. So instead of subtracting from 90, like we did on number two, we're gonna subtract from 180 because that's what supplementaries do. They Angles do, they add together to equal 180. So subtract from 180 and you get 137 degrees. Or again, you can set up an equation 43 plus the other angle, call it X, equals 180. Subtract by 43 on both sides, and you will get the exact same answer. Problem number five, use the diagram at the right. Given line M, that's right, the M and the N. If you look on the diagram here, you can see they are the, the ways that we label the lines. So lines M and N are parallel. This double bar here means parallel. And you can see from the drawing, these are meant to be parallel lines. All right, find the value of X. 
All right, so how in the world do we do this? Well, there's actually two different ways. You can realize that there is a straight angle. Sorry, I'm moving the wrong here, thing here. Let me try this again. There is a straight angle right here, and x and 52 are two of the three angles that together form this straight angle. So what's the other angle? What's this guy over here? Um, let me highlight this for you here on my screen. So this angle here, what is that? Well, there actually is a way of figuring it out. It just so happens that the 90 degree, 99 degree angle here and the 90 degree, 90 is, the, is the same, forgive me, the 99 degree angle here is congruent to this angle here. Why? Because they're alternate interior angles. And so, now we have three different angles that together form a straight angle. We have the 52 degrees, we have the x degrees, and the 99 degrees. The three of them together form a straight angle. We know a straight angle means 180 degrees. So what you can do is you can add the two angles whose measures you know, 99 and 52. That would give you 151. Then you can subtract that from 180. Where's the 180 coming from? That's the straight angle. And that's going to give you 29 degrees. You also could set up an equation. You could say 99 plus 52 plus x equals 180. And then 99 and 52 give you 151, subtracted from both sides. Very similar to the equations I was showing you on the other slides. So if you did this problem using an equation, that's totally fine. Um, by the way, there is another way of doing this problem. Let me erase the highlights here. The other way of thinking of this problem is realizing that there is a triangle that is formed inside of these parallel lines with the two transversals. And so if you can find out what the angle is here, then you can find out what x is. Well, it just so happens that the angle that I have here in green is 52 degrees. Now, how do I know that? Because the angle here that I already labeled as 52 degrees is an alternate interior angle with the other one right here in this corner. So, alternate interior angles, they are helpful no matter which way you solve this problem. And then your work would be the exact same that I'm already showing here. Add the two angles you know, subtract from 180 because the three angles of a triangle always add up to equal 180 degrees. So either way you look at it, this is the kind of work you're going to get, you're going to do, and you're going to get 29 degrees for the measure of x. Problem number six and seven, you're going to use the diagram on the left. Now, number six says write an equation that could be solved for x using the 78 degree angle. All right, so how are we going to do this? Well, we know that the 78 degree angle, an acute angle over here, and right next to it, is this obtuse looking angle, which is called 9x plus 3. That's the angle that has the x. So we have to use the 9x plus 3. Otherwise, our equation wouldn't allow us to solve for x. How are we going to get an equation from this? Well, those two angles being side by side together form a straight angle. You guys know a straight angle is 180 degrees. So these are actually a pair of supplementary angles, which we talked about on number four. Their measures will add together to equal the 180 degrees. Again, the 180 is coming from the idea that they together form a straight angle. So 9x plus 3 added by 78, that's the equation, or those are the things you can add to equal to 180 to get your equation that could be solved for x. It doesn't actually say you have to solve it. If you were going to solve it, you would add the 3 and the 78 together because they're like terms, and then you could subtract that from both sides. Later, divide by 9 because there is a 9 times x on this problem. All right, problem number 7, same diagram, but now they're wanting you to write an equation that can be solved for x using the 102 degree angle. So this is going to be different. We know the 102 degree angle is up here. We know the 9x plus 3 is down here here. Maybe you're starting to see what I'm seeing. These angles are the exact same type of angles. Well, meaning they're congruent. They're the same measure. The proof is they are a pair of corresponding angles. 
Corresponding angles means angles in matching positions or in the same position. The 102 degree angle is in the top right hand corner. The 9x plus 3 angle is in the top right hand corner, but in the bottom part of this picture. That's what we mean by angles in matching positions or same position. That's what makes them corresponding angles. And since corresponding angles are congruent, you can just set these two angles equal to each other. You're not going to add them together equal to 180 like we did on the last one, because the last one, two angles made a straight angle, but that's not the case here. These two angles are congruent. So 9x plus 3 equals 102. That's the equation that you could set up. If you were going to solve this, and I'm not saying you have to, you would do inverse operations, get rid of the adding by 3 by subtracting by 3. Later, you would divide by 9, because that's the inverse of multiplying by 9. All right, problem number 8 and number 9. I gave them on purpose, side by side, because I want you to make sure that you do not get the rules for angles of a triangle mixed up with the rules for sides of a triangle. It's a completely different set of rules. For the angles of a triangle, we know they add up to equal 180 degrees. Now, they're giving you the measure of two angles that are each 33 degrees. So one of them is 33 and the other is also 33. To get the measure of the third angle, we can add the two angles that we know, 33 and 33, which gives us 66, and then subtract that from 180. Where's 180 coming from? Three angles of a triangle always add up to equal 180. Always. That's the major rule for angles of a triangle. Subtract from 180, you will get 114 degrees, which would be choice C. The other way of showing your work is you could just set up an equation. First angle, 33. Plus second angle, 33. Plus third angle, we don't know what that is, call it X, equals 180 degrees. The like terms are the two numbers with no variables. They add up to be 66. Subtract on both sides. It's the same kind of math we were doing on the left, just in an equation style of showing the work. Now, for number nine, two sides of a triangle are 10 feet and 35 feet. Which of the following could be the length of the third side? All right. This has nothing to do with 180 degrees. Nothing. Because this is not angles. This is sides. And the rule for sides of a triangle is that any two sides of the triangle should be able to add together to be greater than the length of the other side that you didn't use yet. So we can actually set up the triangle inequality theorem in multiple ways to check out and to find out what the third side is allowed to be. So let's take the two numbers we're given, 10 and 35. We know they should add together to be greater than the third side. Well, what is the third side? Oh, that's right, we don't know. Pick a variable, call it n or x. I think your guided notes call it n. Here I'm calling it x. I don't care what letter you pick, pick a letter. 35 plus 10 we know is 45. Now if 45 is greater than x, that really means x is less than 45. Remember how we normally put the variable on the left side, so we flip everything around, including the inequality symbol with it. So we know x is, is uh, less than 45. It can't be 45 or more. It's got to be less than 45. But that's just one way of setting up the triangle inequality. We also, instead of doing 10 plus 35, could say 10 plus x has to be greater than, well, the other side we haven't used, 35. From here, to solve for x, you have to do inverse operations. The inverse of adding is subtracting. Do that on both sides, and you will get x is greater than 25. There is actually a third way you could set it up. You could say 35 plus x is greater than 10, but that's kind of silly because 35 is already greater than 10. So the only way that couldn't work is if x was negative, which is impossible <laughs> for sides of a triangle. So we're not going to even bother writing that third way down. It's a waste of your time. These right here will give you the limits. We know x has to be less than 45. x has to be greater than 25. So let's start narrowing this down. If it's greater than 25, then it can't be 20. If it's less than 45, then there's no way it could be 135. But could it be 45? Is 45 less than 
45. Oh, wait, no, it's not. It would be equal to, but this inequality symbol does not have an equal to bar. It, it does not. So you actually have to eliminate the 45 feet. It can't be that. It has to be less than 45, but also greater than 25. Well, that's going to be the 29 feet, because 29 feet is between the 25 and the 45, so it works for both. That is the answer to the problem. Now, there is a shortcut. You don't necessarily have to set up these fancy inequalities. You could technically add the numbers together, subtract the numbers together. That will give you the limits that your third side has to be between. So yes, if you understand what I'm talking about, there could be a shortcut to this. But if you don't understand what I'm talking about, then this is the way you should be showing your work, triangle inequality theorem.